Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Denali-14. In our last episode, the party discovered a woman that was actually a polymorph Nykoloth. The ensuing engagement has injured most of the party. We begin this presentation with the aftermath of the battle. Harris quickly dug into his rucksack and began to pull forth healing elixirs and bandages. A quick triage showed that everyone had been hurt by the fiend except for him, and Brother Stance of the Verte Order was unconscious. Grish, the Zenobian cleric, appeared to be the most seriously injured of them all. While hopping from comrade to comrade, the mage began to notice the furnishings of the cave had changed to that of an ordinary stone chamber. Gone were the tapestry floor coverings, the silver bowl of fruit, and the other miscellaneous furniture. The acid from the Nykoloth's blood had eaten away the flesh of his associates, as well as a portion of the stone floor where the fluid had pooled. With no other assailants in the area, he returned to the task of healing his associates. After gathering and administering the curative concoctions, the party began to feel better. Additional healing was given out by a rejuvenated Grish, as well as the laying of the hands by Sir Omel the Paladin. What the hell was that thing? asked Phidias. Shaking heads indicate that none were familiar with the creature until a pensive Grish pointed out that he believed it was a fiend called a Nykoloth, but confirmed that he had never had any dealings with one. Sir Omel spoke openly, pointing out that he should have felt the aura of evil that such a creature would have given off. Harris pulled forth a copper amulet from the folds of his robe and showed it to the group. Sir Knight, I believe this item may have masked the beast's true intentions. I found it on the corpse after I pulled it forth from the cleric. I don't recall seeing it on the female. If the Zenobian is correct, then the creature has great ability. Yolanda Two Blades spoke up, asking if the wizard had found anything else. Yes, actually I did, came the response. Once you were all stabilized, I toured the chamber to make sure we were safe from further intrusion. I noted that the plush furnishings had disappeared, but I did find an old wooden box near a descent over there, pointing to the far side of the cave. Anything good? asked Phidias. Well, said Harris, it is filled with about 5,000 silver pieces and this bone scroll tube with a royal symbol on it. Royal? exclaimed Grish. Give it to me now. The, uh, please. Harris handed over the wax sealed tube and the cleric examined it. He spotted a G impressed into the wax. I wonder who has that seal, he said out loud. Only one way to find out is Phidias swiped it from his grasp. The cleric rose angrily, and the gnome tossed the tube to Brother Stance, who quickly broke the seal and opened the tube. As Grish moved to him, the monk extended his hand and waved a finger in a no fashion. The Verte monk looked at the parchment before handing it over to Yolanda. I can't read it, milady. Would you be so kind, he said. She examined the words on the page and looked puzzled. Well, demanded Grish. I don't know what to make of it, she said, as she gave it to the Zenobian. She addressed the group and pointed out that it said that the Garmin wanted to thank Razel for her continued assistance and offered the coins as a gift. Sir Omel asked if that was it, and Grish looked at him, nodding in the affirmative. Who the hell is Razel or the Garmin? asked the rogue. Yolanda and Grish looked at each other, equally puzzled, and shrugged their shoulders. Harris, biting his thumbnail, began to mumble out loud. Chest of coins, deep in the caves, supposed to be a dragon. Maybe it's a payoff? 
Finally, he stopped and spoke with the group. Perhaps this Razel is the dragon and is being paid off by Garmin person, maybe? Sir Omel nodded and offered his opinion that the dragon is Garmin and is paying off someone named Razel. I bet Kellox would know who it was, said Phidias out loud. You guys may think he's an idiot, but he knows everything in Red Bluffs. That may be so, my small friend, said Brother Stance, but from his reaction at the shrine, I think he may have died from fright with this thing, as he looked at the corpse. How far did you scout, wizard? asked Grish. I went about thirty feet down that new tunnel and felt a cool breeze and heard the sound of water. It may be a way out of this cave system. It may lead us to the dragon, said Yolanda. True, but it appears we only have two choices to make, said Harris. The group spent the next few minutes hashing out a plan, with Yolanda, Grish, and Sir Omel supporting moving forward. Harris and Brother Stance voted for taking a rest as it was quite late in the day. The group compromised and opted to make camp for a few hours in this area while securing guards at the two entrances. Several hours later, the group felt better and Harris had been able to gain a, ref a few spells. Forward and downward, yelled Phidias, while Yolanda replied, as long as we're talking about moving and not our lives. New torches were lit and the group moved deeper into the mountains. While the going was steep, they all smelled and heard what Harris had described. It appeared as though the group was on the ocean side of the mountains now. The incline stopped and landed the party into a large open cave with several rock formations present. At the edge of the torchlight, the PCs made out bones strewn about the stone floor. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at the Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.